we have covered some dumb, stupid, sometimes quite funny articles on Conservative Home. But today, Conservative Home has, has really done themselves a complete disservice. Because, as I've often said, in Conservative Home, reading the comments can be quite illuminating about what, uh, shall we say, people think of the particular article that has been written. And very, very often, you can see people completely disagreeing with the article, saying, what is going on here? You know, at least, you know, reasons thought out ways. And bear in mind, to actually become a approved commenter on, on in the comments of Conservative Home, you've got to jump through some big, big hoops. That's why I've never really bothered to ever do it and sort of put my two penneth in the comments down below. You've really got to jump through some hoops. You've even got to, as one form of identification, provide your Conservative Party association number. So these people that do sign up to the comments are, you know, dedicated, hardcore readers of Conservative Home. And in many cases, are we are one hundred percent really real because, like I say, you've got to jump through some hoops. But the comments below this article are all one hundred and ten percent against this article that has been written because what I have seen here is some absolute grade A, like wagyu beef type ridiculousness. Because you have an article here by an anonymous blogger who writes for all different publica publications by a guy called Joe Barron, who has decided to write an article today saying, and I kid you not, let me show you the article in question, that aid agencies, aid agencies are responsible for the civilian deaths in Gaza. Bear in mind, you've got this right here. I think what he has written is completely irresponsible, pretty much straight-up Israeli propaganda. We'll get into that in a moment as well. But also, Conservative Home should really, I think, consider just yeeting this article 100%, because what this guy says has no evidence to back any of this up. Some of it is absolute, straight-up Israeli propaganda. And to say that aid agencies are somehow responsible for civilian death, I think crosses a line beyond any reasonable, responsible, you know, line, as far as I'm concerned. I don't even know what, what you would, would, would call it. I'm, I'm generally lost for words. And it's not like I respect conservative home or anything like that. I really don't. It, like I say, we've covered some ridiculous stuff from them in the past. But to go to this to such an extent and allow this guy to to like you know cover your stuff. No, uh, I I think this is you know beyond the pale. You should you should really consider getting rid of this because it does not make you look good. Not that you look good in the first place for a number of other reasons, but this, yeah, we'll be getting into this in a moment. But before we do that, like I say, you know what to do: hit the like, hit the share button, check the links out down below. Patreon page, buy me coffee link, uh, Patreon. Um, you know, etc. all down below. You can see it scrolling across the screen at the bottom as well. But uh, let's get into this, shall we? Because, oh boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, prepare to get angry because this made me sort of really angry as well. Which, to be honest... Given I've had a look at this guy's uh, Twitter page and the other stuff that he's he's, he's sort of read, um, oh yeah, I can tell he's doing this on purpose. This is this is his intention to sort of make people angry. Uh, but here's the thing: going in in this way, um, I think it is insulting, and I think really this guy has pretty much posted Israeli propaganda. 
and outed himself probably as an Israeli propagandist at this point. So there you go. So according to the quote, Pearl Clutching Commentariat, Israel is not doing enough to avoid civilian casualties in Gaza. Over 30,000 civilians are now dead, and the majority of whom are now women and children. Yeah. They are, they are not... That's not good. Like, that is not good enough. Like, 30,000 civilian deaths? I'm sorry, that's not pearl-clutching. That's, you know, an actual serious number that we should not be accepting. And other people, I, I, I've I've said this before myself, there is no military solution to the situation in Gaza. Like, there is no military solution to this. It doesn't matter how much Israel tries to, to sort of enforce one, there is no military solution to this. There, it is and always has to be a diplomatic one in this case. Because that's the only way you're going to solve this, with a diplomatic solution to this. And that equals a two-state solution. Um, and of course, Israel not really content to, to sort of follow on uh, from that. So, to some, I like that, to some, these are distressing figures. To some, these are distressing figures. Um, yeah, just goes to show you the who, who this, whose side this guy is really on, uh, which some suspect are being fabricated by Hamas. Uh, again, these are not uh, being fabricated by Hamas. There are multiple sources uh, that have gone through on this that have corroborated sort of some of these numbers. Uh, but there you go. Shows shows shows, shows this guy's journalistic intel and you know integrity when this guy claims to have written for uh, the Spectator and the Daily Mail. But again, there you go. Uh, so they're using this as evidence of genocide, genocidal assault being carried out by the Israeli minister, min uh, military, and by extent the Jewish people. Um, not really by the Jewish people, but certainly by the Israeli military. That is absolute fact on this case. Uh, Hamas's actual genocidal attack on the citizens of uh, of Israel on the 7th of October last year, during which they raped and mutilated uh, the bodies of countless young Israeli men and women, almost seems to be beside the point. Yeah, you do not just get to say, oh, well, that happened. Let's just go in there and just, you know, bomb the heck out of them. <laughs> it's just... Two wrongs do not make a right. and. You know, it bears repeating there is no military solution to this. As much as Israel wants to try and quote get revenge on this, and Netanyahu trying to do this to try and reinforce his, um, you know, his own security uh, in in a way so that he sort of remains in power. Because the only reason he was brought back in the first place was because he was the big security guy uh, on this. Yeah, it turns out by allowing that attack, uh, no, not really. <laughs> And of course, you are seeing mass protests in Israel uh, over this. Um, this whole uh, right-wing coalition that has been been built potentially going to sort of fall to pieces, hopefully, uh, by looks of it. As I've said before, you know, the two biggest problems to peace in the Middle East, right-wing Israeli government and Hamas. But hey, we'll get on, maybe we'll talk a bit about that. But like I say, we're going to get sidetracked a lot if we, if, we, if we continue like this. So let's, let's get on with this bit more. So, um, so this is almost uh, beside the point. The fact that Hamas hides within the Gaza population, using them as human, sh human shields, and thereby maximizing the number of civilian deaths also seems to be beside the point. Where's your evidence uh, of that? Don't provide any evidence, but okay. You're not going to provide any evidence, and I can dismiss it without any evidence. So, even if the first casualty of every war is the truth, this leaves one in this leaves one incredulous. Anyway, it's back to front, upside down, and lost in a labyrinth of web and deceit, enveloped in the thick fog of disinformation. Um, so okay, let's just take out a way that you are saying that all these casualties and etc. is just all information. Let's not even include evidence 
then from that's coming out from Hamas or Israel. Just look at all the other non-governmental organizations. The UN, for example, did their own report about the civilian deaths going on in there. Multiple aid, aid, aid agencies, although, of course, he blames aid agencies uh, for the deaths of civilians uh, in the moment. So I'm sure he, he takes their, you know, trusts their numbers. But there are multiple sources that corroborate those numbers, some even more than that. So <laughs> it's not just disinformation. It is he is only trusting one source. And in this case, as you are about to see, Israel, because the next thing he says is Israel is doing all it can to avoid civilian casualties. It has not shown that at all one bit. The propaganda war that Israel is, is trying to fight is that it is doing everything it can uh, to fight this humanely um, against sort of Hamas. That has not been the case. That has not been shown. We've just seen uh, the, the death of the British aid workers that were hit recently, the World Food um, Organization, that was going on a pre-approved aid route. They were on a pre-approved aid route. Doesn't really show that they were that cautious about this, of course. So according to John Spencer, one of the world's foremost authorities on urban warfare, Israel, uh, to, uh, Israel civilian to combat casualty ratio in Gaza is now lower than any other comparable conflict. Indeed, it is one combatant to 1.5 civilians, according to the global average of one combatant civilian to nine civilians. I don't trust those numbers because, like I say, this guy is, as we're about to see, very much a Israeli, um, I think, disinfo agent trying to sort of stick up for them. Uh, I very much do not trust those numbers. Uh, like I say, there is a lot of evidence to point that, again, the death toll, again, speaks for itself. So, continues, in Mosul in 2016-17, when the US and UK forces destroyed ISIS, it was uh, two to one to five, and Spencer goes on to say that, Israeli, uh, that Israel protects civilians more effectively than anyone else in the history of warfare. Again, look at what's going on. Other sources going on in 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 the in this zone that doesn't really seem to be the case as much as israel wants to say this um the reality and the evidence does not reflect what they are saying that is a massive propaganda war to allow them to try and continue on this very much so uh it is the only nation that throughout uh that has thrown out phone calls text messages voicemails to warn civilians of any planned assault in an effort to try and save civilian lives even though in doing so such for warnings does give hamas a military advantage um they have blocked phone uh you know text phones and mobile phones they have cut off power civilians are not receiving these messages <laughs> they can say that all they want but when you've cut off power, when you've um, blocked uh, sort of the, the messaging of the phone calls of, on this, yeah, it doesn't really provide, um, you know, that, ev that, that evidence. And when you have seen the amount of scale of destruction that has gone on here, just the complete and utter saturation bombing of, of some of these places, yeah, it, it's gone beyond, oh, yeah, we're just going to tell these people in this one apartment block to to get out. No, it's, you've seen the scale of devastation that's gone on here. Yet, facts do not seem to matter. Well, they don't seem to matter to you either, uh, Joe. Uh, even though these three distinguished academics uh, recently debunked Hamas's casualty figures, pointing out the fact, in particular, those concerning women and children are statistically impossible, many continue to lie to liable the Jewish state with bogus numbers that incite hatred against not only Israel, but the Jewish people. Um, who are these distinguished academics? So, again, highly uh, press, pressing X to doubt. Yeah, pressing pressing X to doubt your, your claim there that you've got three highly distinguished academics. Um debunking those Hamas casualty numbers. And I've said before, throughout all of this, there are other agencies that have, that have pointed out how high the civilian casualty numbers are here. 
he's just choosing to to believe uh, one side over another. Uh, so back to it here. So what about, of course, the recent deaths of the World Kitchen aid workers? Let's get on to this, shall we? This is surely proof of Israel's deliberate targeting, not only of civilians, but those selfless enough to actually help them. Well, no, it's not. And proof that war is hell. Innocent people die and mistakes happen. And this was a mistake, a bad one, for which two senior military personnel have been dismissed. Um, yeah, some mistake. Targeting people along a pre-approved aid route where they had massive stickers on the top to, to sort of identify their vehicles in keeping with what Israel has put to these aid workers saying, if you want to operate in this area to make sure, you know, we don't target you by accident, uh, we recommend you do this. They were following that. They were following those rules. Guess what? They died following the rules that Israel had put out to them. And it's not the first time that these things have happened. We've seen hospitals attacked. Uh, We've seen Israeli special forces go into go into hospitals on purpose and take people who are wounded because they are suspected Hamas fighters when there's no evidence of them being being Hamas fighters. They don't know who is Hamas and who isn't, which is one of, if not the biggest criticisms of this campaign, which is why I just keep on saying there is no military solution to this. So, however. Such instances are not unique uh, to the current conflict. Despite David Cameron's nuanced ex uh, expositions of North London dinner party groupthink, he was responsible for the accidental deaths of a large number of innocent, innocent civilians during his 2011 Libyan misadventure. Obama's Joe strikes that hit a wedding party in Afghanistan uh, also springs to mind. Exposing Joe Biden, the then, president, uh, then vice president now as president, berates what he uh, inaccurately, uh, inaccurately, and outrageously calls Israel's indiscriminate bombing. Yeah, and those are bad as well. But you can't just engage in in what aboutism here. Those and uh, should be condemned. But then you cannot just turn around and just go. Here's the thing: those were individual acts. But what is going on here is that it, civilians in Gaza and Palestinians are dying every single day because of the actions of Israeli military. This just keeps on being clear. You cannot make a clearer case for what is going on here. The evidence is clear, he says. Well, yeah, it is clear, but you just don't like to accept any counter-evidence to your claims by the looks of it. Uh, Israel does not deliberately target civilians. <laughs> I throw my head back at laughter at that when there has been so many uh, examples throughout all of this uh, that has that's, that's been mentioned. Um, your own, uh, you know, accident that you said about the targeting of the world, uh, world, the the world kitchen organization that happened. <laughs> anyway, it goes above and beyond to avoid civilian casualties. I'm sure it does. Um, and again, evidence says otherwise. But the fog of war leads to mistakes, and such mistakes are rightly investigated and punished, as they have been in the World Kitchen case. Uh, except they haven't uh, really been uh, fully uh, investigated, nor really have they been fully punished. I mean, these two people, th those officers have been dismissed from the military, and that's it. We don't know what else is, is going to happen to them after that, whether they will, will face you know, who else? But there are other cases going on which should be investigated. Are we are you calling for those to be investigated as well? If if it, if it's right for these people to be investigated and punished, what about all the other stuff that Israel has done during this war as well? Are, are we gonna investigate that and punish them as well? Oh no, we can't because uh October seventh. Once again, two wrongs do not make a right. Anyway, the objectable behavior of some aid agencies, this is where we get to the fun stuff. So the objectable behavior of some aid agencies, however, thickens the fog and makes mistakes and therefore civilian casualties more likely. Look at the United Nations Relief and Work, work, a, work, and work Agency. 
Um, just want to sort of point out what he is about to say. This is all Israeli propaganda. There is no evidence whatsoever that um, money has been given to, to Hamas, that they have worked with Hamas, that they have aided Hamas in any way. This, the United Nations, has said themselves. I wonder if this guy is going to sort of accept that you know, the UN themselves have said this, but of course he's not. He's about to sort of parrot Israeli propaganda. <sighs> there you go. Don't. Among others, the US and the UK now have suspended funding after 13 of their employees were found to have participated in the October 7th terrorist attacks. Nine have been sacked. Uh, so Adari, a UN teacher in Gaza, celebrated the rapes, murders and mutilations on social media. Uh, Sony Al-Hadi, uh, the headmaster of a UN-run school and chairman uh, of, the, of the union, uh, was elected to a Hamas Politburo in 2017. Uh, Gerald Al-Samara, and her master's minister for the economy also works as a teacher in the UN uh, school at Khan Cornish. Well, of course, here's the thing this guy is not pointing out. Hamas is the only game in town in, in Gaza. Hamas runs and controls everything. There is no one in Gaza, I could guarantee you, at probably some point or another, has not worked for indirectly or worked for Hamas directly. They run everything in Gaza. Are you going to say that the police force in in Gaza is also part of Hamas as well? This is just so monumentally stupid, the argument he's making here. But again, he's, he's an idiot. <laughs> he really is. And again, we should point out the UN has come out and said there is no evidence for what any of this stuff about um, about the UN, the United Nations Relief and Work Agency. Nothing whatsoever. This is Israeli propaganda. So, um, so former and, of course, long-serving uh, staffer lamented that finding neutral employees is very difficult because, like I said, Hamas is the only game in town. What, what are they meant to do? <laughs> Um, Unifus ties with Hamas adds another layer of complexity to the ongoing Gaza conflict. How can Israel trust a UN aid convoy when they know that they could be working for Hamas? There's no evidence that they are, but there you go. The UN is an organization that can seemingly uh, de uh, deeply hostile to the only uh, democracy in the Middle East. After October the 7th, it took the UN's body nearly uh, uh, neatly for uh, body nearly for women's rights, almost two months to come and condemn Hamas's use of sexual violence. What about the sexual violence that we have seen perpetrated of the Israeli military against uh, the, the Palestinian uh, population? He's going to mention that. I don't think so. Once again, convenient to you know quote the UN when they're backing your point up, but not, of course, when they disapprove of your point. That there you go. The UN Security Council is of her stuff still yet to condemn the atrocities. And to add insult to injury, a Hamas intelligence center was found beneath the UN headquarters in Gaza City. How can Israel trust a UN aid con a convoys in this environment? Uh, again, just an excuse to to sort of stop aid convoys going into work Gaza, right? Because that's that is what Israel is doing now. We are seeing Israelis at the border on purpose stop these aid convoys. Because they are buying this right wing propaganda that is being put out by these right wing Israeli government people. See how it's all linked together. And as I said at the beginning, two biggest problems to peace in the Middle East Hamas, right wing Israeli government. So the same dilemma is now caused by the Red Cross's stance. The Palestinian Red Cross Society, affiliated to the ICHR, uh, although thought to mainly have transported Hamas terrorists in its ambulances. Your evidence for that is what? Anyway, many Israelis, including Nachin uh, Desiana Liata, found that Shana Dina Haziz and Israel Law Center scolded the Red Cross for not only this, but also not doing enough to help the Jewish hostages still being held in Gaza. A letter signed by the over 1,000 solicitors uh, said that it is a <coughs> pun decade-old pattern within the Red Cross. 
before pointedly highlighting their failure to assist Jews uh, in the Nazi concentration camps during the Second World War. Amnesty, Am oh, I love this. Amnesty International has also veered into a very worrying partiality. In a tweet, it described the recent death uh, in an Israeli prison of a convicted Palestinian torturer and murderer as cruel, uh, as a cruel reminder of Israel's disregard to Palestinian rights to life. The man tortured and castrated a 19-year-old victim. Um, yeah, still not an excuse to treat him like that. We should be respecting rules of law regardless of what someone did and to be honest i am very much once again pressing x to doubt about this guy's supposed um crimes i'm pressing x to doubt because like i say this guy uh he's a right-wing shill he is no different to someone like andy no who puts out things like this wanting people like me to respond you know, the pearl clutching commentariat to respond, but to go this far to blame aid agencies for civilian deaths in Gaza beyond the pale, beyond the pale. This guy is truly a disgusting human being, really is. Anyway, it appears that many aid agencies and human rights organizations are. Um, embedded into anti-Israeli narratives. Such enmity <laughs> indirectly adds another layer of complexity to Israel's mission to destroy Hamas and minimize human suffering. This helps no one apart from the nihilistic barbarians of Hamas. And here's the thing. Everyone, everyone comments has said this, that this guy is, is foolish. Foolish for pointing out what he is doing. There is not a single comment on this supporting this guy of what he is putting out. Once again, about uh, the aid agency. Again, alleged to have participated. The final report of the matter released today on the 22nd of April concludes that there was no evidence for this at all. Those allegations were just Israel propaganda. All these claims here, he has provided no evidence for some of the claims this guy has made in this article. He has provided no reasonable, uh, you know, I think explanations for for any of this. It's just complete what aboutery, you know. Oh, this happened. Well, what about this? What about this? Oh, that happened. Oh, but what about this? That that's all this was. This was a this was a terrible article, um, by to be honest, a very terrible human being. Um, and this guy is anonymous, and I can see why he's anonymous, because he's ashamed to put his real name to it. Um, <laughs> you know, what a coward. Uh, but there you go. So, yeah, this is what this guy has done. Uh, I think he's a coward. I think Conservative Home should delete this article. Um, it doesn't provide any evidence for what he, he backs up on this. I think they should be ashamed for publishing this. It really should be. Um, but there you go. Um, honestly, wordless, because that was just really blaming aid agencies. No, uh, that that's just beyond the pale. I, I yeah, well beyond the pale uh, on this completely. Not a single shred of evidence has he provided. And of course, as they say, if you do not provide evidence to support your claims, it can be dismissed without evidence. And almost every single piece of evidence he provided in that article can be dismissed. It was nothing but pure Israeli propaganda. And that is a big part of this war. Because they know, and everyone else can see, what's going on in Gaza. So, until then, as always, uh, we'll see you all next time.